Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade exponential equation. Uh, I keep saying homemade for some of these problems because I haven't seen this problem anywhere else and I kind of came up with the idea, obviously, anyone can come up with this kind of idea, it's very easy to do. But anyways, uh, this is a nice exponential equation in my opinion, um, just let me know what you think. We have x to the power square root of x equals 1 half. You know that we've done exponential equations before, like x to the power x, 2 to the power x, something to the power x, whatever. Those are kind of fun to do. And I know some of you guys are thinking about the Lambert's W function. Uh, you can solve, you know, you can use that, but it's kind of like using a calculator, in my opinion, because you still need a calculator or a computer to evaluate uh, the numerical value. And it's an approximation. So anyways, I like the algebraic approach better. So we have x to the power square root of x equals 1 half. And uh, sometimes people um, don't like the idea of guess and check. I don't know why. It's a problem solving method. It's valid. And you just guess and then check. Of course, if your check doesn't work, then your uh, initial, um, you know, guess is incorrect. Anyways, so I talked too much, so let's get started. How do you solve these kinds of equations? Guess and check. Okay, you could do that, right? Well, I, here's what I'm thinking. I want to start with some observation first. So notice that a lot of times when this comes up, you know, that means that the, the professor or the teacher or whoever the person is, they already know the answer. Of course, when we come up with these kinds of problems, guys, we, we know the answer beforehand. That's how we come up with this problem. I think of a problem uh, before, um, like I think of an answer. Anyways, let's continue. Again, I gotta stop talking. Square root of one fourth is one half. Okay, great. So is it, this is true, right? Well, why did I say that? Well, square root can be written as something to the power one half. So this tells us the following. I can write this as one fourth to the power one half, and that's gonna give me one half. Isn't that cool? Nice. You can also make a problem like x squared to the power x. You know, these kinds of things are easy to make. You start with some numbers and then turn them into x's. Okay, great. Now, this is significant because look at my original um, problem. On the left-hand side, we have x uh, as a base and square root of x as the exponent. And here I have the same situation, right? If uh, x is one-half or one-fourth, uh, its square root is going to be one-half, right? So I can safely say that if uh, x to the power square root of x is equal to one-fourth to the power one-half, I kind of have like a match which means that if x equals one fourth, this is going to be true. So uh, this implies that x can be one fourth. Obviously, this doesn't say uh, that this is the only solution, but it gives us one of the solutions. So we kind of have to find all the solutions or we have to prove that there are no other solutions. Make sense? Okay, at least we know that x equals one fourth is a solution. Now, I'm going to manipulate the one fourth and write it this way. So x to the power square root of x is equal to one fourth to the power one half. And I'm going to write the one fourth uh, as, well, I'm not going to write the one fourth as something. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write the one half as two times one fourth. And now put the two inside. And notice that hasta la vista, hocus pocus, you know, abracadabra. I'm going to get the following, 1 fourth squared, and then I'm going to raise it to the power 1 fourth. And that is going to give me the following. I know some of you are going to find this a roundabout method, but it gives me the nice identity, 1 16th to the power 1 fourth. And again, I have the x in the base and the square root of x in the uh, exponent. So this implies, uh oh, this implies that from here, x can be 1 over 16. So 1 over 16 is another method. So can we just keep milking this, <laughs> you know, until we run out of solutions? Obviously, that's not going to work. If you do like 1 16 squared, one, 1 over 256, you know, keep doing it. Obviously, it's not going to work. We only get two answers this way. But are these the only solutions? We kind of have to look at it more analytically. So for that purpose, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of calculus. Don't be scared. Uh, it's going to be easy. Okay. So, here's what I'm going to do. y equals x to the power square root of x as a function. x must be positive. I don't want it to be 0 because 0 to, zero to the power 0 is kind of problematic. But if you take the limit, you know, you can look, you can look at it too. Limit as x approaches 0 from the right. You can't approach from the left because x cannot be negative. 
Uh, and you're going to notice that this is going to become 1, right? I believe so. Something like that. And if you remember the graph of x to the power x, uh, it's kind of like this. There's a hole at 0, 0. I mean 0, 0, not 0, 0, 0 1. So it kind of goes like this, right? It has a minimum. So our graph is going to be similar to this. Why? Because I'm replacing the exponent, uh, x in the exponent, by square root of x. Anyways, so, uh, but let's take the derivative and see what happens. To take the derivative, before I take the derivative, I know some folks don't like that, but sorry about that. I'm going to ln both sides. ln means Napier's logarithm. I know you guys like that word. Not the natural. Some people uh, were opposed to the idea that this is natural, but I believe it's called natural logarithm. I still believe that. Anyways, move the square root of x, and you'll get a nicer expression now. Differentiate both sides. Now, how do you differentiate ln of y? y is a function of x, so we have to use the chain rule, and implicitly... If you differentiate this, you're going to get y prime over y, which we kind of use this idea to solve some of the differential equations, right? Anyways, I hate too much. Let's go ahead and finish this up. Uh, I'm going to use the product rule on the right-hand side, the derivative of square root of x multiplied by ln x, plus the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, multiplied by square root of x. And uh, from here, um, if you simplify this, you're going to get the following. To keep a long story short, you're going to get this plus that, if you simplify, make a common denominator, you know, if you do make a common denominator, you're going to get ln x plus 2 divided by 2 square root of x, so on and so forth, it's going to be multiplied by this weird expression x to the power square root of x. And of course, uh, with these kinds of problems, we take the derivative because we want to find the maxima or minima, so we want to set this equal to 0 and find critical points where the derivative is 0 or uh, fails to exist. Uh, obviously, at zero, it doesn't, but who cares, right? We don't care about zero. We, we're look, working in the positive world, so we're only interested in this um, becoming zero. But x to the power square root of x cannot be zero if x uh, does not equal zero. And even if x equals zero, it's not going to equal zero. It's never equal to zero, right? So, and, so we want ln x plus 2 to be zero, that indicates that ln x is equal to negative 2, and that means that x is equal to e to the power of negative 2, which means x is equal to 1 over e squared, which is approximately, I think, 1.0.135. Okay, so that is my critical point, and what's going to happen at that point? Let's go ahead and explore this a little further uh, by making a table. I know some people like the second derivative test. I don't like the second derivative test. I like the first derivative because you know what? I don't want to differentiate that gigantic expression again. Okay, so this is e to the power of negative 2, which is the same as 1 over e squared. Uh, we have a root. Uh, and what happens uh, uh, to the right of e to the power of negative 2? Well, if, x, uh, if ln x uh, plus 2 is positive, the derivative is positive, uh, let's work backwards. That means ln x is greater than negative 2. That means x is greater than e to the power of negative 2. So to the right of this, it's going to uh, become a positive derivative, and here it's going to be a negative derivative, which means that our function is going to increase. Of course, we have to start at 0, and this is going to be positive infinity, and then our function is going to increase, thereby making a minimum point. So we're, we'll have a minimum at e to the power of negative 2, and if you want to know what that's going to turn into for the x value, you can just plug in x equals uh, 1 over e squared, and our function is y equals x to the power of square root of x, and from here y value is going to be e to the power of negative 2 to the power e to the power negative 1. And that's just going to be a really interesting number. I didn't evaluate it, so you can kind of look it up, but anyways, it's a positive value, so it's, that's what matters. So now, uh, we're going to have, um, you know, minimum... And notice one thing, uh, we found two solutions, right? To this equation, we found, okay, 1 fourth is a solution and 1 16th is another solution. I want you to notice another thing that um, 1 over e squared is actually between these values. Why? Because e squared is between 4 and 16. How do I know that? Well, you can kind of square 2.7 and you're going to notice it's 7 something, right? Okay, great. So that means that uh, between uh, the two roots, we have our minimum point. And uh, here's the graph. Yay, there we go. So the graph also shows you the intersection points exactly, by the way. 1 over 16 is this one, and this is 1 over 4. Obviously, the y value at that point is always going to be 1 half. Okay, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.